Hello and welcome to WePC, my name is Jay and in today's video I'm going to be talking about wired versus wireless mouse. Mice? Mices? Mouse? And which one you should choose for gaming. It's a question that has plagued many over the last couple of decades with consumers struggling to decide whether or not the benefits of wireless technology actually outweigh the reduction in gaming performance that they sadly lose. So let's waste no further time and dive straight into it. Now for people new to gaming mice that are unaware of the more intricate differences between the two technologies, I've drafted up a table to outline the main pros and cons of both. Now as you can see, whilst wireless technology has come a long way since its humble beginnings, there are still key differences seen when comparing the wired and wireless gaming mice of today. Whilst that might sound negative towards wireless gaming mice, you'd be surprised how little the difference is when comparing gaming performance. So now is probably a good time to compare the top players in the wired and wireless mouse categories. This should give you a better understanding of the pros and cons that these mice come to the table with. We'll be putting the Logitech G Pro Wireless, one of the world's most popular gaming mice, up against the Razer Death Adder V2, which is probably the most popular wired gaming mouse out there currently. So I've once again got a lovely little diagram for you. Now upon first glance you're probably thinking to yourselves, eh, there's not really a great deal of difference between the two mice. and. You'd be absolutely right to think that. However, when you do glance down at the price difference, you soon start to see why this decision becomes so very difficult. The difference between the two sensors that these mice are equipped with is basically unnoticeable, as is their size, if truth be told. The only real benefit of the wireless gaming mouse at this stage is the lack of wires and the slight drop in weight, which in this case is two grams, Everything else is fairly similar. Now, obviously the Logitech G Pro comes equipped with a ton of additional features like swappable buttons and power play support, but these are things that do not affect you as a gamer. When it comes down to raw performance on the gaming field, there really aren't too many things that separate these two gaming mice, if I'm being honest. When it comes to gaming mice, the number one most important tech spec when determining raw performance has to be the sensor. The sensor dictates how accurate the mouse is and how well it tracks your movements, two crucial elements when playing the majority of computer games. Sensors have been subject to huge advancements over the past decade or so, with the current batch of gaming sensors offering flawless accuracy, excellent response and durable lifespans too. And as a general rule of thumb, if you're largely playing fast-paced shooters and FPS titles, you're going to want to choose a mouse that offers the best possible sensor. For other game styles such as MMOs, RPGs and RTSs, you don't actually have to worry as much when it comes to your next mouse purchase. Another important spec is DPI, or dots per inch, and it's a simple way of measuring how sensitive a mouse can be, with a higher DPI offering higher sensitivity. Whilst this is usually flaunted by manufacturers as a more of a marketing tool, it doesn't actually have a huge input on your gaming performance. So why discuss it? Well, the answer is exactly that. Manufacturers will use DPI as a large selling tool when it comes to gaming mice, with the latest offerings going as high as 20,000 DPI. But if you're a newcomer to gaming, you might think that 20,000 DPI sounds a whole lot better than 12,000. However, in a real world situation, you're never gonna go above 1200, I mean 2K at the most. For me, the shape of a gaming mouse is the second most important feature it comes equipped with as it has a huge impact on your in-game performance. And you need to be choosing a gaming mouse that's right for your grip style and your hand size. If you choose a mouse that isn't optimized for your hand size or grip style, you are putting yourself at a serious disadvantage when it comes to playing competitive gaming titles. Both wired and wireless mice come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. So finding one that fits your hand and grip can take a little figuring out. However, taking that time to make sure the mouse you buy is right for your grip and hand size really could be the difference between winning and losing in your games. Weight of the mouse is also something important to consider. As a general rule, we usually recommend lighter mice such as the Cooler Master MM711 for competitive FPS titles such as CSGO. Other game styles don't rely on reaction time and aim as much, so weight doesn't really play a key role. You will also have to consider latency. When referencing mice, latency refers to how long it takes for the mouse to send a specific command to the PC and be registered. Now, while the difference between today's wired and wireless technology is less than noticeable, it still plays a major role in our decision-making process. Most of the time, wired mice showcase lower latency as the signal gets sent via a physical wire. And on the flip side, because wireless uses a wireless technology, the signal can be delayed or interfered during its course to the PC. Now, whilst this probably won't affect most of us playing casual games, professional esports players need every little advantage that they can get and almost always opt for a wired connection. And the final tech spec to talk about is IPS. IPS stands for inches per second, and it refers to how well the sensor can track the movements that you make. So for example, say a mouse that comes equipped with a 400 IPS tracking accuracy 
theoretically has the ability to track your movements up to 400 inches per second. So basically the higher the number, the more accurate the sensor is at higher speeds. Okay, so with all the technical specs out of the way, which one should you choose? Now, ultimately, choosing whether to go for a wide or wireless gaming mouse really just does come down to specific needs and how much you prioritize raw gaming performance. Nine times out of 10, the wide gaming mouse is going to provide better gaming performance at the end of the day, albeit only slightly marginally. They come equipped with lower input lag, usually offer a lighter build design and will probably save you a few dollars at the checkout also. Having said that, if you do prioritize desk tidiness, versatility, and user experience instead, then absolutely go for a wireless gaming mouse. Ultimately, choosing between the two in today's market comes down to a key factor, the price. At the top end of the price spectrum, the differences are few and far between, with wireless mice now providing a very good account of themselves. If you head to the description down below, then I'll put a link to our best buying guides for the best mice. So there you have it guys, our quick video on wireless versus wired gaming mice. Please let us know in the description down below, what team are you, team wired or team wireless? I'd love to get a conversation going in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I would love if you could leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you hit that rectangle over there, that'll take you to another one of our videos that I know you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.